Hi everyone. Welcome to my first live. I'm really nervous. <laughs> Wait a few minutes and let some more people log in. I have some wonderful friends and family who are supporting and joining us tonight. So thank you for that. I'm trying to figure out how to share it on my own page. <laughs> and if you're able to hear me, if you would just post in the comments that you can hear me okay. I have my AirPods on standby if we need to engage those. Hi, Tish. You'll be getting shout outs later. <laughs> Hello to my lovely wife. Hi, Deb. Hey, Al. And Cammie, if you're there too. Hope you guys are doing well in all this lockdown. Yay, thank you, Deb. Still trying to figure out how to share it on my page. It's kind of weird when you have a linked account. <laughs> Yo. So tonight I'm just going to talk about um, what's going on. What is this willing willow tree healing tarot stuff reiki house cleansing blessing chakra woo woo figured it out. It's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride the first time, I suppose. I'm hoping to go live at least once a week, so we'll see what happens. Yo. <laughs> oh. <sighs> All right. So I will go ahead and get started, and then as people log in and join us, then wonderful. So a little bit about willow tree healing, tarot, Reiki, chakras, stuff. Um, I've been wanting to start this for a long time. And um, a little bit of background. Back in 2014, that was a rough year. Um, I'm not going to lie. That was... That was pretty hard. Um, my grandfather passed away in January of 2014. And he was, as one wonderfully observant friend told me at that time, he was my lighthouse. He was my light in the storm, my calm. I was grandpa's girl. And I loved that. And that's how I had identified for 30 years. So um, wonderfully grateful that I had him for those years, but it was really hard to lose him and someone so important in my life. So I went on an unofficial healing journey. 2014, honestly, is pretty much a blur. <laughs> I lost um, some relationships that were important to me, some friendships, um, and the like. So it was, it was an interesting year, but got through it. In 2015, uh, my life turned around. I started an awesome job that I loved. I got to help people through, um, through their grief 
and I worked in hospice, which is a hugely humbling experience. And um, I went to Grief Recovery. The Grief Recovery Institute is an international, but it's based out of, um, I think they're in Oakland now. They're East Coast and they give certification trainings. So part of my job was to be a certified grief recovery specialist. And my cat is playing in the curtains. <laughs> so if you see the curtains, that's the cat. So um, back to grief recovery. I went through in four days what would we usually do in group in about eight to 10 weeks. It was pretty intense, but it was hugely therapeutic and my life changed. I was very skeptical at first. I thought, how can this really be so great? But it is, it's amazing. So if you ever have an opportunity to um, participate in grief recovery, please do so. It's a wonderful experience, very healing. It's a lot of dirty work, but it's worth it. Then um, my life got, to quote the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, my life got flipped, turned upside down. And another year later, um, I had to, I was going back to school for social work and I had to drop out and homeschool my child because of some unfortunate events that happened with the school in the district. Um, but we made it, we got through that and um, things are turning around again. In 2017, I met the wonderful Tish Needs Wiki and uh, her group, Soulspirational, so not so shameless plug for Soulspirational. It's a wonderful group of people. Um, I have truly met my soul tribe with them. Non-judgmental, healing, beautiful souls. And um, through Tish and her understanding and her willingness to take me on as a client and work through some pretty messy stuff. Um, we have, hi again, Cammie. <laughs> we have been um, working through a lot of issues and um, I don't think we're ever truly done with that until we pass back over into spirit out of this physical world. But after that um, first year, I knew I was in the right place. So I have, through my sensei, Tishimoto, as we say, um, we, uh, I was able to participate in some training. So I am currently a level two Reiki certified in Usui Reiki, which I'll explain that in a little bit. And uh, hopefully soon to be a master. That's really exciting. And then um, I've also done chakra work and I have... Uh oh, my mom can't see it. Maybe my lovely wife can help her. <laughs> so um, back with my Usui Reiki chakra, I've learned a lot about tarot with Tish. Um, house blessing and cleansing, I've taken that class. A lot of Archangel and Ascended Master and channeling work and all kinds of good stuff. So um, thank you. To Tish. Yes, Tish is amazing. And um, I've been fortunate enough to work with her for quite a long time. And um, we have entered this wonderful world where um, through her endless encouragement and support, um, I am starting Willow Tree Healing. So why willows? Um, I've always loved willows. I think that they're beautiful and spiritually symbolic. Um, for me, I'm really a mermaid for anybody who knows me. I love water and um, willows grow at the water and I just love their, their branches, how they hang and sway and they're so strong yet delicate and how they bend, they don't break. So a little bit of everything in with that one. Um, also, I believe my entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, I was raised in an entrepreneurial family. For those who know, my dad is, um, well, he's now retired, but he started the business when I was a year old and retired just a few years ago, though he still works just as diligently as ever. Uh, but I learned a lot 
growing up in the business and then later working for the business for almost 10 years. Um, so I was raised to be ambitious and to, there's mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, how to have goals and how to reach those goals. And with college, it was never a matter of if it was where <laughs> and what will you major in. So um, lots of inspiration behind my wonderfully supportive family and my wonderfully supportive soul tribe and sensei. Thank you, Aunt Patty. And um, the, the training and the, the qualifications and the certifications that I've gained with Tish. And um, I've also signed up for a series of other certifications through Hay House. So um, Hay House has a wonderful, wonderful um, arsenal of books and cards and authors and videos and trainings and certifications. They're wonderful. A lot of really great um, authors that I follow and um, hope to follow in their footsteps one day. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So um, some of the services, I'm going to get into that. So some of the services that I offer, um, Reiki, like I said, so what is Reiki? Um, I have my talking points over here. So <laughs> for anybody who's like, why should you keep looking off to the side? That's why. Um, so like I said, I am level two Usui Reiki. So that is a specific genre of Reiki. It's um, considered to be the most traditional form of Reiki. Thanks, Holly. You're beautiful. So um, I have been, since I'm level two, I have been attuned to five Reiki symbols that I use um, in various ways for healing. Um, one of the symbols is distant. So you don't have to be right in front of me, especially in this time of, of lockdown and, and COVID and being extra careful with ourselves. I can use that symbol to move through. Um, we can be on the phone. We could be video chatting. Um, I could just send you Reiki and you are just open to it at a certain time. Um, through that symbol, I can uh, give you a Reiki treatment. So it's pretty cool. And then um, I've had hundreds. I can't even, I try, I was thinking about it earlier and I couldn't quite think of if I had to quantify how many hours I have done Reiki either to myself, for others, in Reiki shares at Soulspirational, um, people just asking. Hundreds of hours, I'm sure, if not more. And um, Reiki is Japanese, Rei and Ki. Rei being divine or universal and Ki being life force energy, so Reiki. And um, it's a Japanese healing art, if I didn't already say that. So it moves through all living things. So us, plants, animals. There is Reiki for your pets. So hi, Steve. Good to see you. Um, so it's, it's infinite. It's from source. It's not mine. This isn't my energy that I'm giving you. Trust me. You don't want my energy and I don't want yours. So with, uh, with it coming through source, it's always positive in nature. It is always light. And if anybody tries to tell you anything else, it's not Reiki. Um, it is channeled through me. Like I said, it's not mine, but it's channeled through me and through my hands to the recipient. So to you for instance. Um, it brings your physical and energy or spirit body um, into harmonization and into balance. It's all about balance and, um, and into alignment. And it can also help with emotional issues. That's when we kind of get into the chakras. We see what balance, um, not balances, what blockages are in there. So we can get those out uh, we can work through them. We can push them through in various ways and um, work on, on balancing those energy bodies with your physical body. Sometimes people will say, oh, wow, my headache's gone or my backache's gone. Um, or, ooh, I feel really hot all of a sudden or I feel really cold. That, that does happen. It's energy and it's all in how you perceive it and how it flows through you. It's never the same for the same person. And even for you, it wouldn't necessarily be the same twice. 
So it's beneficial uh, for a lot of chronic conditions like arthritis or chronic disease, um, dis-ease disease. So though it, it's not ever a replacement for medical advice or seeing your doctor or taking medication, please always do that. <laughs> um, I will never tell you, nor any ethical Reiki practitioner would ever tell you that, um, oh yeah, I can cure that. So you don't ever have to, so you don't have to have your surgery or you don't have to take that medication anymore. That's not a thing. That's not real. Um, that's probably somebody who's just after your money, but it can alleviate symptoms. It can help, um, bring everything into harmony. So you'll feel better. Um, more so than not emotionally, you'll just, you'll feel better. So you can also use Reiki. Um, so I use it all the time. Every night before I go to bed, I Reiki the house. I play symbols and I pray and I surround us in divine white light. Um, same for my car, Brandy's car every morning before she goes to work. I'm always doing my thing, um, making sure that she's safe. And um, it can also, you can use some crystals. So here's, this is my palm Lambradorite. Right? I always have my trusty stones. Anybody who knows me knows I always have a pocket full of stones. So um, I, I'm a big believer in crystals and intentions and um, not so shameless plug for my friend Joy. If she's watching from the crystal den, she is amazing. Um, I got this gorgeous Labradorite sphere. I just love how I love Labradorite to begin with, but I love how it just glistens. She's got some really great um, pieces. I have far too many <laughs> pieces from Joy, but um, all of her stones are, are beautiful and wonderful. And she's in Barberton, so feel free to check her out. She's on Facebook as well. So Soul Spirational and the Crystal Den. I am getting nothing other than supporting my friends and their local businesses. So just so you know. Um, you can also Reiki your food. I do that. Um, when we just sat down to dinner tonight, I reikied everybody's plates and gave thanks. And you can also do it with letters, emails, text messages, resumes. That might be a thing coming up here pretty soon as we work through all of this COVID stuff. So um, you can use intention for that as well. So into chakras, and I am going to let you guys um, ask some questions later. But if you have them now, go ahead. My wonderful tech team is keep an eye on everything in case I miss it. So chakra is, the word itself is Sanskrit for wheel or disc. Um, you might hear it pronounced chakra, which is how I pronounce it, or chakra. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy, for linking Tish's page. Um, you might hear it pronounced chakra with a more pronounced C-H. Hi, Rick. That's one of my soul tribers from Soul Spirational. Um, so there's seven main chakras. You might have heard of them. Um, they're pretty much the rainbow, if you think of it that way. So you have your crown, which is the top. Some people see it as purple. I see it as white, um, or it could be crystal. Third eye, which is typically purple. Throat, which is blue. Heart, which is green. Your solar plexus, which is yellow, your sacral, um, which is right about um, under under your belly button, a couple inches, that is orange, and then your root chakra is red. Um, and some people go the other way. It they're supposed to <laughs> tish. <laughs> they're supposed to kind of commingle and and intertwine with each other. And forgive me, Tish, if you re I know you know I just don't remember what this is called. <laughs> um, so each one has a function um, related. They each have an emotion and a color. And um, basically they're just to regulate and maintain that balance that I talked about earlier. So when your chakras are in alignment, we're more balanced. So if you're with me and you're getting a chakra treatment, um, typically what's going on is just like maintenance on your car from the moment that you drive it off the lot and you hit a pothole, it's automatically out of alignment and chakras work a lot of the same way. 
if um, somebody cuts us off in traffic, we can, Arr! you might feel it in your solar plexus or in your chest and your heart chakra, depending on what's going on. So um, having regular maintenance to make sure that they're aligned, that they're not too big or too small the front there's front and back there's there's a lot to it <laughs> that i i won't dive too deep into everything um i would like to save something for future lives uh but just as an overview and not to make this too long or, or bore anybody who's not really interested in some of this stuff um it's just basically that as dr wayne dyer says and i love him if it is not so much that we are humans having a spiritual experience. In the physical world, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So um, old emotional wounds from that human experience can disrupt our chakras and the flow and there can be blockages and having a hard time. Most of us have a hard time with those lower three, the solar plexus, sacral and root. And especially those of us who are more in tune with our spidey senses. Um, our upper three chakras, four chakras are usually pretty okay. Everything meets in the heart center. Um, so we like to make sure everything's balanced as much as possible. Um, an important note um, beyond just none of this is a replacement for physical um, medical advice. We can see see or feel into it these blockages and we might lovingly say something to you um, and then it's your free will it's your choice if you go seek medical advice um, you obviously wouldn't want to walk into your doctor's office and go yeah Kelly was giving me a Reiki treatment and she said that my heart chakra is blocked so something might be going on <laughs> they, they might look at you and say you might need a psych eval but hey I've been having some pain in my chest uh, you know something does, doesn't feel right, can we take a look at that? That's about the extent that it would be. So you are ultimately responsible for your healing and your well-being. Um, I am just a channel, a medium through which energy flows and um, just be open, be open to receive. Because if you are blocked and saying, you know, this is a bunch of nonsense or I don't think this is really gonna work, I'm just gonna humor somebody through this you're not going to receive all the benefits that you potentially could through Reiki. On to house blessing and cleansings. So if you've been living in a house for 30 years, or if you just moved in, or if someone just moved out, you got a divorce, or you have a kid going to college post-coronavirus, <laughs> um, or they're coming home because coronavirus, energy can be disrupted. So it, it doesn't matter. Um, Anytime that you make a large purchase, you get a new bed, a new sofa, a new refrigerator, anything like that, um, energy gets brought in. So to cleanse any of that, not necessarily negative, I mean, there could be something funky in the house, it happens, <laughs> but um, just to get some of the stale energy out, you know, we've been in this lockdown, a lot of us have been home for so long that, we just need to get rid of some of the funk and some of the stale energy um, so that you can feel ultimately so that you can feel safe and comfortable in your home. It's your sanctuary. You should feel safe and comfortable. So if something just feels a little off, basically what I do is I go through the house um, or your space and I cleanse the whole thing. It's kind of like dusting. If you just dust one room, the others are still dusty. So we go through the entire house. So I have this lovely, no, it's not a feather duster for you say anything, Rick. It is a lovely, um, just to kind of help clear the energy, move the sage around. So I have my bundle of white sage and my little container because we don't want embers falling onto the floor and catching fire. That is not a good way to cleanse a house. <laughs> so... Uh, basically, this would be lit and, and be caught here with the embers. And then I would just go around and uh, set the intention to clear. I usually bring some big guns like Archangel Michael with me. And we, we go through. I also have holy water 
and I usually bring a jar candle that um, we would leave lit the entire time and then that would be yours to keep um, it's built in to the package if you wanted anything extra um, like some crystals so clear quartz is great um, selenite this is a selenite wand I usually use that in my tarot readings stay tuned we're gonna talk about that in a minute and thanks to the lovely Miss Tish I learned about tinctures. So I don't know if this is gonna come across. I really hope it doesn't hurt your ears. I'll try to be soft, hold on. It sounds so pretty. I hope it translated. But if it didn't, sorry about your ears. <laughs> so um, it's just ways to keep the vibe high. Also music, um, if we play music, anything over 417 Hertz is good for clearing. So um, we could play that in the background. We would open all the doors and windows. Um, if you have screens, that's fine, no big deal. Um, even in the winter, we would open everything up so that one, sage can be really potent <laughs> and it can be really, um, yeah, my wife's laughing because I usually choke her <laughs> whenever I sage. <laughs> Gotta get that stuff out of there. So um, we just, it, it allows all of the energy and the smoke from the sage and the uh, smell if it's not pleasant to you and <laughs> gets it out of there. I would love to Aunt Patty. So that brings me, I was thinking about you. Absolutely. There actually, I'll talk about that. There are friends and family discounts, so stay tuned. There's, um, I was thinking about you earlier because I was thinking about the family farmhouse. So those who don't know, my Aunt Patty and my Uncle Tim live in the farmhouse that my great grandparents built. Um, oh, wow. Help year probably 1900 ish <laughs> it's beautiful it's brick it's two stories hardwood floors it's it's just amazing and it already has great energy because it just it's always been in the family so i think that um it's just got great energy so um that's the thing about the blensing and the cleansing is that yes deb <laughs> Family like family, tomato, tomato. That's why I say friends and family, um, especially for my aunt's bestie. 1940. Oh, I thought it was earlier than that. Okay. So um, it only removes what's not serving. So the stale, stagnant energy, anything that um, like scientifically sage can Neutralize the negative ion. So if you're not a woo-woo person, but hi, Tracy, welcome. Yeah, Deb, grandpa is in there smoking his pipe. So uh, my mom's father, my grandpa, Gene, he, um, <laughs> oh my, my ears ringing. He, uh, he usually comes with that, that cigar pipe, some kind of tobacco odor with him whenever he's around. And there goes my cat again. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, he's lively. He's great. So um, it wouldn't remove grandpa's energy. Grandpa's allowed to stay. That That's not a thing. So um, he's not going to be cleansed out of the space and never to return. If he's allowed to be there because he's part of the family, he's not hurting anything, that's great. Um, my bedroom set was my dad's parents. So they, um, they brought their own energy with it. So when I cleanse in there, it's fine. It's already, it's still got good energy. So this is just to get rid of negative energy, previous owner's energy, because you don't know what you're walking into, um, especially in apartment buildings. So um, just, just to get the funk out. The good stuff stays, the bad stuff goes. And then um, tarot and oracle readings. So, yay. One of my favorite things to do um, is give readings for people. So I'm very happy. Hi, Aunt Cindy. And I'm assuming Uncle Ted. Um, if not, hello to Uncle Ted. And Uncle Tim for Aunt Patty. Um, and Daddy for Mom. <laughs> so... Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to catch you as I as I see stuff. 
come in. So tarot versus oracle. So tarot readings, tarot's um, got 78 cards. It will always have 78 cards in the deck. Oracle can have four or 40 or 400. It doesn't matter. But tarot will always have 78 cards. And tarot has two arcana. Arcana is a fun word. So it means secrets or mystery. And really, isn't life just full of secrets and mystery? So 22 major arcana. So those are major things, major life events. Um, archetypes that influence. So some of the cards can be scary. Some people get triggered when they hear tarot, like, oh, that's of the devil or that's terrible or whatever. It isn't. Um, just like anything if somebody uses it for light purposes like I don't do Ouija boards I just I'm cleansing my hands I don't like Ouija boards they scare me they always have even when I was a kid but Brandy's grandmother used um, a Ouija board and she knew how to protect it was light energies only wasn't calling in anything negative so any tool can be used for good or not for light or dark I use things only for the light. So all of my decks are only for the light, even if they look a little dark. Like I have some Halloween decks and a vampire deck and they're really fun and I like them and a witch's tarot. So um, if those things trigger you, obviously I wouldn't use those decks with you. I have plenty of other decks. Um, but there are some cards in the traditional depictions like, the, oh yeah, and hi Cheryl. So, um, with the devil, the death card, um, the 10 of swords, the tower, they can be really scary for people to look at. And it's just the traditional imagery from when it was a little bit darker in life. <laughs> I think we've come a little bit farther. I'm not sure, but, um, they're just life events. The death card doesn't necessarily mean a physical death. It just um, means usually it's the end of a cycle. Same for the 10 of swords. It can look really scary. It's a dude laying down with 10 knives in his back. And sometimes it's blood, guts, and gore, depending on the artist. I don't like those decks, so I don't use them. But it can be scary. It can really look terrifying. And if somebody sees that and they think, oh my gosh, somebody's gonna stab me in the back. Not necessarily. Um, that's part of the secret. So a card might look a certain way to a muggle, <laughs> like when I used to, um, used to be one, then um, I would be kind of scared and I didn't really know what that meant. And then we pulled back and I learned the meanings and that every single card has light and dark, even the world or the sun card, everything has light and dark aspects. Then the minor arcana. So there are 56 of those cards and they're broken down into four suits. Pentacles, which typically is um, like money, earthy stuff, physical, like your house. Cups, which is typically emotions. Swords, which are your thoughts or um, intellect. And wands. Wands tends to be a little fiery energy um, action. So depending on what you get, to, uh, in what you're talking about. So if I'm in a reading, oh, <laughs> hi, Uncle Tim, thank you. So um, if I'm doing a reading about a relationship and I don't see any cups, I'm gonna know that there's probably not a lot of emotion behind this, but if I see a lot of swords or pentacles, then that might be a relationship of comfort or an intellectual relationship, not necessarily romantic. So that's just, just an observation. Of those four suits, there's ace through 10, um, tends to be a cycle. So you can kind of see a timing where you are in a cycle if you get ace or anywhere in between a 10. And then there's the court cards, um, which can also signify, like the knight signify movement. Um, the king and queen tend to be archetypal of people. So the queen of cups, I see myself in the queen of cups. I also see myself in the high priestess. I always look at the fun fact. I always looked at the high priestess in a deck to see if I want to buy it. Um, so they can be archetypes of 
like a queen of cups would be um, someone who is in control of her emotions, who has come full circle, that knows what she's doing and is very careful with her very full cup. And same for a king. Um, male and female. So like if I were doing a reading for myself and I pulled the king of cups as myself, it doesn't necessarily mean gender. It, it's just an energy. And then oracle cards um, are great for anybody who, like I said earlier, if they are maybe a little apprehensive about tarot because they have those misconceptions or preconceptions about tarot and, and what it means or they've had a bad experience. Oracle can be a little softer. So um, where tarot is really great for detailed spreads, showing life path, um, trajectory, kind of the roadmap, so to speak, the Oracle can focus on a certain, mm, let's just say area. So there's a deck that I have that is the Romance Angels. So if somebody's asking about their love life, I can pull out the Romance Angels deck and see what's going on. Um, if someone wants to know more about work, I have a life purpose deck. If we're talking about past lives, I have a past life deck. So they can be very hyper-focused. And then um, the other thing to note, especially about tarot, things are not set in stone. So if I am, hi Becca, if I am reading and you don't like the way that things are going. And I'm being honest with you, like you probably shouldn't turn left over there. You should probably go right or stay forward. <laughs> then you have the power. It's just an energy. We're reading energy. We're not fortune telling. We're just reading an energy. So if you don't like the way that the energy is going, you can make a hard left or you can turn right. Or you can keep going the way that you're going. You ultimately have the, de the decision. It's in your hands. You have free will. We all have free will. Um, let's see. I think that's it as far as my premeditated <laughs> talking points in my handy dandy mermaid, of course, book. So yes, definitely we can have a group party. I love doing um, parties and psychic fairs. It was almost a year ago, Tish, can you believe it? And Rick and Amber, we did our last psychic fair together. And um, it was so much fun reading for people, some that I knew and some that I had no idea who they were. <laughs> I'd never met them before in my life. Um, it's, it's always fun to get that validation. We're in Eagles concert. Oh, man, Journey, guys, Journey was canceled. <laughs> I was really looking forward to that. That was going to be so much fun. Hi, Christina. I think everything just shook because I was so excited. Hi. So um, I love to do parties, uh, group readings. So uh, basically what happens is I'll go in to a group. So say you're having a birthday party or a retirement party or a bachelorette party, a Halloween party. New Year's Eve, whatever it might be. Um, I'll go in and each person can have 15, 20 minutes, depending on how many people are there. And it's gonna be pretty quick. It's gonna be a little bit basic um, if there's a lot of people and I have to be that fast. But the beautiful thing is you'll know how to contact me. So you can tell your guests or um, they can tell me. I'll have to, if anybody knows a really awesome graphic designer who can make a killer um, logo for me so that I can print up some business cards. That would be great, thank you. Um, I also, I have my website, so check out on the page. It's willowtreehealing.net.com was sniped by somebody who was trying to charge about $1,000 for the domain. No thanks, I'll just take the .net. <laughs> so willowtreehealing.net, pretty proud of what I've got up there so far. Um, I have links to my Facebook and my Instagram. I also have my email, Willow Tree Heels, because healing was already taken. Willow Tree Heels at Gmail. So you can ask any questions um, on my page, or you can email me. 
And um, you can also check out my website. I'm going to aim for weekly blogs, uh, probably to go along with my lives. It gives me an option to do videos on there. So I don't know if I'll just upload my lives or if I'll do something different. This is all just a work in process. So thank you all for being here and supporting me. I really appreciate it. And um, have some of my wonderful friends and family and some of my cohorts from Soulspirational. Thank you all. Okay, so am I missing questions? Has anybody asked anything yet? Thank you for linking, Brandy. Thank you, Christina. I'm sending you lots of love and light as well. Thank you, my dear. I hope you and Carter are doing well, and that you guys are staying safe. I'm gonna try to just miss them. Oh, awesome, Holly, I would love to, especially in Lakewood. I hear there's a lot of really great energy up there. And I love your house. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. I'm glad I could impart in some wisdom. Thank you, Tish. Oh, I love you so much. So, 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 so much. Thank you. So hopefully I um, gave you a not too boring and semi-brief overview of everything that is going on. Thank you, Rick. And um, you guys know how to get a hold of me and um, Oh, okay, so mom's asking with COVID affecting, what can we do? Um, so like I said earlier, with Reiki, I do have the distance symbol, so I can send Reiki that way. We can FaceTime, we can, um, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do Google Hangouts. I have to practice with my son's phone, he has my old Android. So we'll try to figure that out. Or we can Facebook, I think we can video call in Facebook. Um, thanks, Steve. And uh, we'll be able to have a live session that way or Skype maybe. And then worst case, I could just say, hey, I'll call you at seven o'clock. Make sure that you're in a quiet space, that you're alone and you can concentrate. And if you fall asleep, that's okay. Um, when I'm done, I'll text you or call you back. And whether you answer is up to you. <laughs> but we can kind of compare notes and what you felt and if you feel better. Uh, same thing with my readings. Ooh, I wanted to show you guys. So some of the decks. So the tarot deck that I love the most because Miss Tish knows. This is my steampunk tarot. I think it's backwards because my phone's turned around. But I love this deck. It's so awesome. It has really great energy. And then the good tarot. This is Colette Baron Reed. She's one of the Hay House authors, like I mentioned earlier. So... Um, it's worded a little bit differently than traditional tarot, but it's got all the cards and all the suits and all the things, and it's just beautiful, beautiful work. For oracle cards, like I said, there are some that are more focused. So this is the Divine Femican, Femican, Feminine Oracle, and uh, it's Megan Watterson. Awesome book. Mary Magdalene Revealed. Beautiful book. She also, her first book was, uh, or at least previous to that, was Reveal, How to Get in Line with Your Spiritual Self. So the Divine Feminine Oracle is hers, and it's got beautiful energy, and it's how to tap in with your Divine Feminine. So this is more of an empowering deck. And the Grace deck. So this, these are beautiful as well. These have more of a, an energy. So like there's a strength silence, um, relax, like chill out <laughs> kind of stuff. And it's got the, that beautiful kind of Renaissance looking paintings. And then Christina, you'll like this. Oracle of mermaids. <laughs> so these are mermaids and each one has a message that's um, sometimes a little harsher <laughs> Not that it's negative, it's just more of a swift kick in the booty than something that's a little more gentle. Yeah, Zoom. <laughs> Been doing a lot of Zoom with working from home. It's fun. It's fun to practice tests. <laughs> we do drum fit on Zoom. Oh my gosh, drum fit. Yes. So exciting. Gets the energy moving. It's really great. <laughs> I knew you'd like it, Christina. I knew you would. So um, with the cards, I can do the same thing. 
um, or I can, we can communicate via text or messenger or email and I can take pictures or I can record a video and send it to you. I'm trying to figure out how to do the whole YouTube thing so that I can do that and send private links because I've had those readings from other readers, so I know it's possible. I just don't know how to do it yet. So, oh, thanks. So Deb was very complimentary on my speaking skills. Two things. One, I grew up in church and uh, was often a liturgist as a teenager. Also a communication degree. Ow, I see you with your master's work. Congratulations, by the way. That's awesome that you got into grad school. And uh, also my cousin Dougie just graduated today. If you didn't see my post, oh my gosh, from Muskingum. He uh, also a Muskie, Alex. He's gonna be a teacher. I don't know when he grew up, <laughs> but that kid, six four, handsome, smart, big heart, good kid. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Well, what? Oh, any any other questions, observations? <laughs> Thank you all for supporting me and for joining me. And it just being on here gives me a level of confidence that I really needed. So thank you. I wasn't quite sure that I was doing the right thing, but with all of you being here and supporting me, I really appreciate it. Tissue inspired me every day. So thank you. Thank you for our talks. Thank you for the classes. If you guys have any interest, she is doing some remote um, classwork with Learn It Live. So if you check out her page, she will uh, she posts on there or on meetup.com, uh, which is how I found her. She has her classes listed and there's one coming up on Monday. She also does Soulful Sunday. I love you too, Mom. My preferred time of day to do self-reiki. Ooh, Steve, that's a good one. Usually in the morning or in the evening. That's usually when, when I'm able to really sit down and focus. But anytime I have a break, if I feel like I need it, I'm probably not as good at self-reiki as I, scheduling time for myself at self-reiki than I should be. Sorry, Tish. <laughs> Me too, Aunt Patty. I am so excited to do um, a group, a party, something with lots of people and lots of energy and to get it moving. And take what resonates and leave the rest. Thanks, Rick, that's so sweet. Being with your energy, Rick, at a lot of Tisha's stuff is so inspiring. So for those of you who don't know, Rick is a scribe. He channels the angels and he just writes and it is the coolest thing to watch and some of the messages that come through are just like ugly cry <laughs> they are incredibly beautiful thank you rick for what you do you're an inspiration steve i need to see your face on some of these channeling classes just saying So thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the shameless plugs that my wife gives me. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Hopefully you'll be able to go back to the beginning and watch. I think we were just wrapping up. Um, so I gave an overview of Reiki, which you had said you were interested in. Happy to talk about that. And um, chakra balancing house blessing and cleansing, and um, tarot and oracle card readings. So if, shameless plug for myself, if you all are, would be, if anyone feels so inclined to share this video, if you haven't already, um, share it publicly so that people can see it. I'd really appreciate it. I did get some um, new likes on the page maybe some subscriptions pretty soon uh, to a newsletter that is in the making <laughs> based on people sharing. So 
So I really appreciate everyone who has shared and liked my stuff. It means a lot to me. All right, guys. Have a lovely evening. Stay safe. Stay warm. Hopefully it doesn't snow anymore. This is May. I'm done. I'm done with snow. I want 70 and sunny. So thank you all so much. Much love to you all. Namaste.